I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru, and as you will have seen in my unboxing, I have got a lot of hardware from EKWB, including this new quantum magnitude CPU block for AMD. I've got three other magnitude blocks as well, but this is the one I've selected for today's job. So I'm going to build a PC and I'm going to use this Silverstone CETA A1. When I saw the CETA A1 at Computex, I didn't get much of a chance to have a play with it. In fact, I was warned to be careful in case I broke the front panel, as the case that was on show there was a demo model, uh, a prototype. So this is my first chance to actually get up close with the CETA A1. It is an ATX case. Uh, it sells for about a penny under 100 pounds, so relatively expensive. This is described as the gold version, although to my eyes it's more like copper, but rose gold is more sort of swish than copper, isn't it? And you pull the front panel, oh, takes a tug. Uh, you will see there a digital RGB connection for some RGB that's in the front accents there. So I'm guessing you have a glow coming either side of that metal panel. And inside you have two black 200 mil fans. In the rear of the case, you've got a 120 filtered top. Front IO includes USB-C. We've got a full length dust filter which pulls out to the rear of the case. Never a massive fan of that, much easier if the filters go to the front, but never mind. And now we've stripped it down, you can see the chassis is quite compact, heavily perforated, white in color. Uh, we've got drive sleds on the rear, and it looks to me like this driver tower here with two cages is removable, so I think I will remove that for this build, so I don't need the storage I'm using a single M.2 SSD. I've got my case, I've got loads of hardware, time to get on with the build.
the PC is built. Before I fill the loop with coolant, I'm going to use my shiny new EK leak tester to check the loop has integrity. In essence, this is a bicycle pump. I've got a soft tube fitting in this reservoir at the rear. I've put a soft tube fitting in the leak tester. I could have connected the leak tester directly with this swivel fitting, but I want to make life easy. And here we go. The first half of the gauge up to half a bar, half an atmosphere, is marked in white. The next quarter in green, the final quarter in red. So we aim for the green. And we lock it off, and now we can remove the little pump safely. All good. The idea of avoiding the red is the loop is held together with O-rings. And as someone commented in my unboxing video, if you overpressure the loop when you're testing, you'll simply blow the thing to pieces. They're quite correct. Um, you won't break anything, you'll just push it apart. So that is now holding at 0 0.65, 0 0.7 atmospheres. We'll leave that for a little while to check that all is good. The loop's holding pressure, so it's time to fill the system with coolant. Time for power. Before I go through the hardware, I'm just going to take off the main panel, which is only very lightly tinted, but let's face it, you want to have a good look inside, don't you? In the front of the Silverstone Cita A1 case, I've used an EK Coolstream SE360 radiator, that's a 3 by 120 unit, and an air-cooled RTX 2080 Founders Edition graphics card. The motherboard is this Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite processor, Ryzen 9 3900X, so 12 core, 24 thread, and I've used G-Skill Trident Z Neo rated at 3600 megahertz. The SSD is an M.2 from Toshiba, which is hidden under one of the uh, heat shields. Power supply in the Silverstone Cita A1 is also from Silverstone, it's their ST85F, which is gold rated, 850 watts and more than adequate for this job. In the roof of the case I've installed a pair of 120mm RGB fans from EK. At the front of the case I've used the stock 200mm fans that come with the CETA A1 chassis. And then we come to the shiny good stuff. So the pump reservoir unit is this EK Quantum Kinetic. That's a 240mm. It's the DDC version rather than D5 purely for reasons of spacing. After I completed the unboxing video I did a week ago of all this shiny quantum hardware, EK confirmed that the volute, the reservoir part of the uh, kinetic system, is the same for both D5 and DDC. It's a question of packaging. The mounting brackets are different, so the DDC being a lower profile pump means I could push it further forward. And as you can see, 
there's very little space to work with. The reason, and this came up in one of the questions, the reason the DDC pump has a fairly naff cabling, whereas the uh, D5 is all sleeved and black, is that the D5 that EK sells is their own special version because they shift enough quantity to make it worth the pump manufacturer's uh, while to uh, make a special skew for them. I think that sentence worked. The DDC, on the other hand, is an off-the-shelf pump. Uh, EK simply doesn't sell enough of them to uh, merit a special skew, and it would make no sense to have a more expensive DDC than D5. In addition to that, at the rear of the case, I've used a 120mm quantum volume reservoir. Uh, that's for aesthetic reasons. And the CPU block is this quantum magnitude, obviously AM4 fitment, and that is aluminium and plexi with RGB and looks absolutely stunning. Mind you, at the price they're charging, it should do, but it does look superb. Coolant is EK Cryofuel Solid Azure Blue. Fittings throughout the system are Torque 16 HTC with a handful of 90s. I didn't actually use any of the 45s, and I've used the red accent rings. Those fittings are absolutely stunning. They're quite chunky pieces of hardware, but they work very well indeed. I bent up the 16mm PETG tubes using their modulus uh, tool. That is a good piece of kit. And should you be interested, these are the models for the four tubes that I had to bend. Slightly more complicated than uh, I would have liked, but the fact of the matter is that inside the C-Tray one, there is a reasonable amount of space, and when you whack in all this hardware, it gets complicated. Now the fact of the matter is, what I've done here is like food photography. It looks very pretty, it works perfectly well, but I've put in so much kit, I'm blocking airflow, especially at the front, you can see that with your naked eye, and of course I've blocked the rear airflow too. It's the equivalent of pouring motor oil on pancakes to make them look like they're glistening with maple syrup. Essentially, I've built a functional PC, but I've kind of faked it a bit, because no one in the right mind would build a PC this way. This is to show off the quantum hardware, and I'm very happy with the results. I've gone for the uh, white lighting uh, to go, the white interior of the case and the blue coolant to go for a touch of sophistication. Oh, come on. Nope, no rainbow here. The proof of what I'm saying is that under stress test conditions, temperatures in this case with the front panel on and the side glass on, got fairly intense, especially in ADA64. Not so bad in a, a loop of times by a stress test, but ADA64 pushed the CPU to the limit. Pulling off the front panel in particular made a colossal difference to airflow, but that's on me. That is not down to Silverstone. At the front of the case, you've got this uh, involved front panel drawing air in from the top and the bottom. The two 200mm fans are then pushing the air through the radiator. That, I think, is working successfully. And I have then blocked it with the kinetic pump reservoir unit. Airflow is hurt, there's no denying it. By eye, and I've reviewed a fair few cases now, this chassis looks perfectly competent. Uh, it will, I think, if you build a sensible system inside it, do a perfectly decent job. Building this PC was fun and games. The modulus tool, the 16 that I used, works very well. I see no reason why the 1412 wouldn't be exactly the same. The leak tester, also good. The quantum kinetic pump reservoir unit, the DDC that I used, yep, happy with that. I would certainly have preferred to use the D5 if I had a bit more space. As to where I'd install it in a case to give myself sufficient airflow, that's a slightly different question. The magnitude block looks absolutely fabulous. I'm going to have to do some serious bench testing with that, where I've actually got proper airflow. To compare that to, I can think of one or two other blocks I want to compare that to. Uh, probably an AMD form rather than Intel, but time will tell on that one. So magnitude, costs a fortune, looks really good. And then we have the volume reservoir. Love that as well. Overall, very pleased. I hope you like the look of it too. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe, return to Kit Guru and watch more of our videos. Do head off to the merch store, buy a t-shirt as well. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is a showcase of Silverstone and EKWB.